Every single year, I like to go back, reflect, and see what my most worn items were. Uh, I keep a spreadsheet. I have talked about it in a previous video, which I'm going to link in the cards up above, which allows me to very accurately track what I'm wearing and see where I'm getting the most mileage in my closet. I always find this really interesting, very fascinating, and I think it's very revealing about our personal style. So I want to run through my most worn items for 2021, and actually, when I was putting this video together, and reviewing my spreadsheet there was only one item that came as a surprise and that was my handbag because I couldn't really think back to which bag I use the most I tend to swap them around but everything else uh, really stood out as something that I know I reach for a lot I will of course have everything I mentioned today linked down in the description box below but if you have any questions please just shout out and let me know uh, so we'll start at the very top which is with tops and my most worn t-shirt so I thought I'd do my most worn tee and then also just my most worn top because generally a t-shirt is my most worn top because it's a great layering piece you can wear it year round quite often I will wear my tees underneath knitwear in the winter time then on its own with a pair of shorts or with a skirt when it warms up the one that I ended up reaching for the most was the Air t-shirt from Everlane. I didn't actually feature this in my best basics video on t-shirts, which I'm going to, again, I'm going to link that in the cards, just because the style of it was a little bit different, being more of a lightweight and, in this case, in the white, a sheer t-shirt. Uh, but honestly, I think out of all of them, this one is my favorite because it really works for my lifestyle here in Australia. Our summers are incredibly hot. They can get up to 40 degrees, 41, 42 sometimes uh, if it's incredibly toasty and high humidity so having fabrics which feel very light airy breezy on your skin are kind of a must in the warmer months and that's why I love these t-shirts so much because they really are all of that and then sun uh, in terms of wear and tear I've mentioned this before but I have noticed on I've got a few of these I've got a few different colors that the seams do twist ever so slightly this is not a deal breaker for me and honestly I think they're really good value for money. I've never actually gotten any holes in mine and they've been washed loads. I size down to an extra small just as I've I've had this small before and I just find it a little bit too uh, broad across my shoulders but I am narrow shouldered so that might be something to keep in mind uh, but yeah such great t-shirts and I also really like their air tanks as well. Those are a really good staple for me in the summertime. Then when it came to my most worn top, this is more of a new addition to my closet. I purchased it for my spring wardrobe and clearly loved it so much that I wore it on repeat. I think part of it is down to how versatile it is and also the fact that it worked really well at the start of spring when it was slightly cooler. Uh, it's this really beautiful linen shirt from Cos. It is in a faded black and it almost has this kind of nubby effect to the fabric. It almost looks like a raw linen really, uh, which I love. The texture of it is really nice and soft and it is ever so slightly sheer so it kind of does have that very light breezy gauzy sort of effect that I love in my tops when it is warmer. Um, you know when it's really hot this is great with the sleeves rolled up you can wear it worn totally open as an overshirt or a jacket if you wish and that was something I really liked because I wanted to uh, incorporate something that had those elements into my closet which was also longer and the bonus with this is that you can actually also wear it like a tunic too because it is a longer length um, I got this in my usual size which is a 36 and it's a really nice oversized fit and the quality of it is just beautiful cause is really good for um, Good basics <laughs> by the way um, okay most worn knit I don't think this one's gonna come as a surprise to anybody but it is my alpaca knit from Everlane and I actually think that this was my most worn sweater from 2020 as well I have so much love for this particular color it's the almond it's a really lovely kind of cool toned OT hue I like the fact that it's not white because it just adds a little bit of extra dimension when you're going for a lighter tonal look which you probably know I really cannot resist. I love tonal outfits. I just think they're the epitome of chic without actually putting any effort in. Um, the sizing on this, it's a relaxed fit. I wear a small and I think it's a really nice fit on me. These wash really well. Uh, I just put them in a hand wash set setting and then I uh, lay them flat to dry. Um, I do have a couple of colors in this. I also wore the heathered black version a lot too which has these little white flecks through it. Uh, in terms of styling I actually really like wearing this with my little Chanel pearl and crystal brooch just here on the bust. Um, I think that again just added a little bit of extra sparkle especially when you've got a knit that is one single block 
color, it's not printed or striped or anything, uh, it could be a really fun way to accessorize and play around with your outfit. Most worn dress is from Series Live and I have really fond memories of wearing this dress. I think most notably because we went down to Bangalore Villas and had a beautiful stay there around the time that our son turned one. Um, I did vlog that trip too actually so I'll link that up in the cards um, and it just reminds me of that every single time I wear it and I think that's one of the reasons why I am so drawn to it. Uh, it's a really beautiful relaxed style. It is this lovely linen oat coloured dress, um, crosses over here at the front and it also has a little tie on the interior and then these lovely puff sleeves really long it's almost maxi length on me and I love that it's got pockets too because that is super duper practical again the quality of this is really beautiful and I've been so impressed with series life over the course of this year uh, which has kind of been the period that I've really been introduced to them. I have done work with the brand as well. Um, this one I purchased with my own money though, just for full disclosure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a lovely dress and I know they've got similar ones available at the moment um, in case you were sort of after this look. And I think this is called the Picnic Dress. And the last time I checked, they did have it in other colors too. They use a lot of reclaimed fabrics, which is really awesome uh, and cool to support an Aussie brand that is uh, trying to use a lot of sustainable fabric in their production so yeah that one's brilliant I wear it in a size small medium it's a really kind of loose relaxed fit let's move on to my most worn shorts and oh sorry now that I'm thinking about it this was the other one I wasn't sure about I was really certain that my among shorts were going to be the ones which popped up as my most worn for 2021 I really want to say 2020 because where have the last two years gone? Um, these ones are from Assembly Label though. Uh, I think I must have worn them loads at the start of the year and then I have worn them a bit towards the tail end of the year but not as much as some of the other ones that I have in my closet. So I was under the impression that it might have ended up being a different style but these shorts, they're brilliant. Um, I like the fact that they're not too tight around the waist. Your body changes when you become a mum and that was one thing I noticed. Um, I'd actually wanted to cull these beforehand because I wasn't loving them as much and then they became kind of my go-to uh, that first summer after having our son. So love these, love the little rolled hem. Um, they do fade quite a bit in the wash is one thing I've noticed. Uh, they were definitely a much more saturated black when I first purchased them but um, I quite like that faded effect and I think that's one of the beauty of something like this that it really starts to age but in a really lovely way and almost kind of adds to the whole experience of wearing it. Um, I have mine in a size 8 and I would say that they fit sort of on the larger side uh, but I wouldn't size down if that makes any sense. <laughs> so that was my most worn pair of shorts. Then my most worn skirt, this was one that popped up in my autumn most worn I believe. I purchased this skirt back in February. I managed to get it on sale at Inku. It's from Isabel Morant Etoile and it's this lovely um, black skirt with a light beige floral print all over it. It has this lovely pin tuck pleating at the top and then it's also gathered slightly as well um, at the skirt too which creates a really lovely effect uh, and it does have the asymmetrical hemline also which I really love. Uh, I did call this out when I talked about it in that previous Most Worn that this was the point in time where I realized that I really love to wear prints on my lower half as opposed to on my upper half uh, and I don't know if that's just because of my features because they are sort of darker and I find that it can just be maybe a little bit too much contrast but definitely something I've picked up on throughout the year and is one of those elements I'm going to be taking note of when it comes to adding any prints into my closet especially if it's something that I've found to be quite true of my style even back to my early 20s. So yeah, most worn skirt and I think I've got this one in a size 36. I don't think my most worn trousers are gonna be any surprise because I've talked about them a lot. I love them, I would wear them basically every week. But they're from H&M. They're these lovely creased trousers from H&M. I've got them in a few different colors. Uh, this particular pair I have has a fixed waistband, but I also have ones which have an elasticated waistband at the back, which are great too. They don't feel as nice as these, but they do also wash really well, and I'd recommend those too. Uh, it's kind of a classic style that they have, so we'll be sure to link those below. But these ones I like because the fabric of it almost feels like a wool. Um, it's very nice and smooth to the touch. And for me, this was a real moment with my style where I started to wear straighter leg pants, and 
Given that I've spent, you know, the last two decades wearing skinny jeans and skinny leg pants, the shift has felt pretty huge. So love these, love how versatile they are, really impressed with the quality for the price. I have this funny feeling they're around the $35 mark, so I feel like I've got an incredible value for money here. And again, I'm going to say the same thing I say all the time, but quality comes at every price. It's all about knowing exactly what to look for. So yeah, H&M pants, most worn trousers. Then most worn jeans are my witchery jeans, which I have to admit, they're, they've definitely seen better days. Uh, the button is completely gone. And I have to wear a belt with these every time I wear them. And also I just noticed, um, I mean, I probably need to throw these in the wash, but they have need a little bit. I think that probably goes away when I put them in the wash. I'm not 100% sure. And quite often I do have to cut these little bits off the hem too because they fray a bit more every single time I pop them in the washing machine. But these jeans I love so much because the denim is so soft. Um, unfortunately the style is no longer available so I'm going to try and link some alternatives below. But the colour is great too. It's almost, it's a light kind of icy blue but then it has this more saturated effect up towards the waist which I think is really cool uh, and the fit of them is really nice. Again, this is one of those items that signaled that shift away from skinny jeans for me uh, and I've really enjoyed wearing them. They're so comfortable. Um, they just, they kind of feel almost vintage as well in my hands and uh, they've been so easy to wear as well. They're sort of a no-brainer for me. Okay, most worn jacket, or blazer, should I say, is from Arquette. This one is a wool poly mix. Um, I found out, actually, a, a couple of you mentioned to me in a previous video that the composition tag is inside the breast pocket, which I had no idea. So thank you so much, because I never would have found it otherwise. This one I purchased during the end of season sale at the end of the Northern Hemisphere summer. And... I'm so glad that I added it to my closet. I would had it in my wish list for months and I was just kind of waiting for the right time. When I saw it was half price, that felt like a good opportunity for me. Um, I like the fact that it's partially lined, so lined on the sides and through the sleeves and also just up the back here. And then the rest is um, bare because it means it's a lighter weight jacket, which works really well for the climate that I personally live in. Um, the cut of it is perfect. It's kind of what I've been after in my closet. It's really black, slightly oversized. It doesn't feel too big on me and I've enjoyed wearing a blazer that's not black, uh, especially as I talked about earlier with that contrast. Navy is a nice, it's a much softer option to have near your face, especially if you two tend to be a little bit paler during the colder months. Then my most worn jacket, again, this one popped up in my winter most worn and it really was unsurprising to me because I continued to wear it throughout early spring as well while it was still quite cool. And that is my Max Mara Dimper Trench. I adore this. Um, and again, this was another sort of shift in terms of silhouettes for me. I've been really leaning into wearing much more oversized silhouettes, which actually I think might be quite obvious by these items that I wore the most over the course of the year and this was a true reflection of that. I have a couple of really beautiful trench coats already in my closet but nothing that really fit in this category that was oversized without feeling too big and yeah I really also love the color of it as well. It's this lovely fawny toby brown which I'd never seen before and that also made it feel really unique um, and yeah it's just been a great addition to my closet. Uh, I know a lot of these items are a little bit more expensive so I will also do my best to link some more affordable dupes uh, for those of you who are looking for something similar but are working with a slightly smaller budget. But yeah that has been beautiful. Um, I have mine in the IT42 which is the equivalent of an Australian or UK 10. I would have been better with the 40 uh, but they didn't have one available so I figured why not just go for something a bit more oversized but if you do buy it stick with your usual size. Let's talk through some accessories and again my most worn shoes they really weren't a surprise to me. My Saint Laurent Tribute Slides which I have in two colours. I've got them in the patent in the latte colour and then these are the smooth leather in the black. Um, I sized up when I purchased these and I got them in a 41. I'm usually a 40 and I would say for sure I don't think you need to size up a full size if you're buying the leather version. The patent absolutely especially if you have wide feet but with the regular leather maybe half a size would have been okay uh, just to get a bit of extra length through the foot. I think it's always a safe bet especially with slides um, but these shoes are beautiful. Um, I love the vintage look of the leather work here 
on the f across the foot. Uh, I think it's really beautiful and for me they're such an easy shoe to wear. They go with everything. I also like the squared off toe as well uh, and they're reasonably comfortable. Uh, I wouldn't walk 10 kilometers in one go in these but I do find I don't have any issues wearing them all day for a regular day around the house. So they are brilliant. Um, really really thrilled with them and you know I've been toying with the idea of purchasing them in the tan leather as well because my Jane Deb still slides completely had it. And that's why I knew these would be my most worn because my Jane Deb still slides used to be every single year. Um, but I'm thinking maybe I might get the Hermes Oran sandals just to have a slightly different shape. If you have those, I would love to hear your thoughts on them because that's kind of on my wish list at the moment. Then we have my most worn bag. So yeah, as I said, I wasn't sure which one this was going to be because I switched my bags out quite a bit over the year. But it ended up being my Quince camera crossbody bag. I have said this so many times, but this bag is just unbelievable value for money. It is under 100 US dollars. It's real leather uh, and it's pretty great actually. Um, similar sort of a shape to the Gucci Soho Disco bag. You know, it's a standard camera bag, really good size, fits the largest iPhone, a decent size wallet. You could probably get a Continental wallet in here. I don't have one. Um, my, I've got the Givenchy GB3 wallet. I'll link it below, we'll pop it on screen so you can see. Uh, but yeah, it kind of fits all of that and then everything else I might need, hand sanitizer, a mask, lip balm, uh, other small essentials that I might want to put in there. Usually I've got a bit of extra space at the top, which is why you might notice there's a pinched effect to the leather here. But yeah, it's, it's great. Um, the only thing I will say is that I feel like the hardware maybe lets it down in this pale gold color and then also on mine the strap is not a croc leather because I've got the croc embossed. It is just a smooth leather and I would have preferred if they were the same. But I love this bag so much. Um, it also has the twill canvas lining as well on the interior and a small little pocket in there. It's just one one large compartment with a small pocket uh, but yeah it's, it's a great bag. Really good size and very very practical. Um, I don't think you can go wrong and it's a good size for both petites and also those who are taller. I believe since I purchased mine they added more notches to the strap as well so you can adjust, so you can adjust it slightly more. I actually had additional notches added into mine by a leather worker so that's also an option too if you don't mind spending a little bit of money. I think it might have only cost me $20 so pretty reasonable. Uh, then I actually thought let's just talk about a couple of other small accessories. So most worn belt goes to my Anderson's leather belt. I really love the fact that this has is a grained leather. It's really, really beautiful quality. And I also like the fact that the buckle is square and structured. I have mine in the 70. I think the 75 would also have been great. Uh, and that I could have maybe just added an extra notch or two onto the belt. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful quality and so nice and soft. In terms of lipsticks, because there's not going to be beauty favourites this year, I'm going to have a whole blog post, so that'll be linked below as well if you'd like to go and check that out. Um, I thought it might be better for those of you who aren't into beauty, but most worn lipstick are these ones from Bobbi Brown. I've worn them in every single one of my videos, pretty much, since... April. Um, I have the color, they're called the Crushed Lip Color, and I have Cezanne Nude and Cabana. And I actually tend to layer both of them, so I have a really lovely kind of nude coral hue. And uh, the quality of these is beautiful. It feels really nice and creamy and moisturizing on the lips, um, and I just love the way that these colors pair together. And then I wanted to talk about some of my favorite jewelry brands as well because. They're ones that I've worn a lot throughout the year. You will have seen them on me throughout all of my videos. And so I thought I'd just quickly take this opportunity to highlight them. So starting with my ears, a new brand to me is Edge of Ember. I purchased a couple of items. I got this beautiful ear cuff, which is really lovely and it's very secure on the ear. And then I also purchased a necklace, which is half chain, half pearl. Really lovely. And I like to wear it so that you can see half of the chain and half of the pearls. Um, around the collar. Uh, those are 
absolutely beautiful and a brand I will definitely shop from again. Then we have, we move on to Linya, which is a brand that I've worked with for many years now and I absolutely love their products. They use recycled gold and recycled silver and all of their items are really timeless. So right now I'm wearing the these beautiful earrings which have a coral, dusty coral stone. Um, I can't recall the name of them but it will be linked down below. I also have on this Zodiac Charm pendant and then I'm wearing multiple rings from the brand too so all the rings on this finger here and then also two of the rings on this finger here are from Linnea. Uh, I just find myself reaching for them daily. They stack beautifully together and they're just a nice way to add a bit of extra sparkle plus they've held up so well. Then of course we have Manjuri, again a brand that I've worn for many many years. Um, this pearl ring is one that I've had for Three or four years now has not tarnished at all and it's really beautiful and then I also have this lovely bracelet with this sort of ruby or garnet gemstone in the center I have a necklace made from the same oh actually I have it here this curb chain necklace which is one of my favorites from the brand uh, and Again, the quality of their products is really, really beautiful. And finally, Monica Veneta, which is a brand that I sort of discovered towards the tail end of the year. I'm currently wearing a necklace from the brand from their collection with Doina. And I know that they use recycled silver and recycled gold too. So that is kind of a look at my most worn items for 2021. I hope that you enjoyed this video and would love to know whether you thought there were any surprises. I mean, I feel like most of these you probably could have guessed if you have been loyally watching every single one of my videos throughout 2021. But thank you so much for, you know, spending some of your day with me every single week it means the absolute world. And uh, I always love getting to connect with you guys in the comments as well. Anyway, I will see you next week with a brand new video. See you soon and thank you again for watching. Bye.